Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding an infinite sum with reciprocals of factorials of odd numbers. That's a mouthful to say. So we have 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial plus so on and so forth, where we add the reciprocals of odd factorials. Now, for this sum, first of all, one of the things we need to talk about is, is this going to converge? And then if it does, what is the sum? What is the value of this sum, right? And we've done a similar problem before. I'll share the links down below. And to be able to solve this problem, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a power series, which we could call the Taylor series expansion of a function f of x equals e to the power x. So f of x, and the reason why I call that f of x is because I'm going to refer to certain points uh, on the function, so I'm going to replace x with certain values. But first, let's go ahead and write down the power series for e to the power x, and that is going to look like this, 1 plus x plus x squared divided by 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, so on and so forth. And it's just going to follow the same pattern. Obviously, you could write this with the sigma notation and say something like this. And notice that I did just I just wrote x, but it actually means x here means x to the first power divided by one factorial, and one basically means x to the power zero divided by zero factorial. So that's the general pattern. So if n starts at zero and tends to infinity, my term is going to be like x to the n divided by n factorial. And we're going to be adding with sigma, right? So this infinite sum is what I'm talking about. Now, if you're wondering what where this sum comes from, you can go ahead and check out my other video right here. That will show you, and I don't need to go over that one more time. Okay? So we were able to write f of x e to the x as a power series, which is nice because that kind of gives us our sum. How? Take a look at the terms. We have x squared over 2 factorial, x cubed over 3 factorial. So first of all, this term right here has 3 factorial in the denominator, so that should be a good clue. Of course, the next term is going to be x to the 5th divided by 5 factorial, and this gives us 5 factorial, and then that's the next one, so on and so forth. But the problem here is that I want the odd terms only, and I don't want the even ones. Let's see how we can handle this by doing some quick manipulations. So since f of x is defined as follows, let's go ahead and replace x with 1 and evaluate f of 1. Obviously, f of 1 from here is just going to be e to the power 1 or just e. And then that equals, if I replace x with 1 everywhere, I get 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial and so on and so forth right? This goes on forever. And obviously, this sum is equal to e, which means it converges, right? It does converge to e. Now, obviously, I want to get rid of the evens, so I need to replace x with negative 1. And if I do it with e to the x here, it's going to be e to the power negative 1 or just 1 over e. And on the right-hand side, all the way on the right-hand side, I'm going to be getting 1 minus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial, minus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, minus 1 over 5 factorial, so on and so forth. Now, if you go ahead and add these equations up, you're not going to get what you want because those terms will just disappear. So be careful, you don't want that. And again, you can check out the other video uh, to see what we did there. Here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to go ahead and subtract these. All right, so let me go ahead and negate the bottom term. In other words, if e is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial, so on and so forth, then 1 over e negated will be negative 1 over e, and that's just going to be negative 1 plus 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, minus 1 over 4 factorial. Notice that the terms are just going to alternate, but they'll change. They will have different signs, okay? Instead of plus, they'll have a minus sign. Cool. 
So this is going to be a plus sign because it was a minus sign before, and then we'll have a minus sign, so on and so forth. Now, the reason why I negated the second expression is because I'm going to add these two terms. In other words, I'm subtracting the second one from the first one. Makes sense? So on the left-hand side, we have e minus 1 over e. And what happens on the right-hand side is super important because the evens are going to cancel out because we negated the second one and that allows us to get rid of all the evens and we get 1 plus 1 which is 2 1 over 3 factorial 2 times that and then 2 times the 5 and the 2 times the 7 so on and so forth and obviously at this point I can make a common denominator write this as e squared minus 1 over e and then I can factor out a 2 here 1 plus 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial because I added the same thing twice everything came with a factor of 2 but by factoring out the 2 I can get my expression almost what are we supposed to evaluate this expression does it have a 1 in it no but that can be easily fixed you know what we're supposed to do first divide both sides by 2 or should I say multiply by 1 half so we can easily do that real quick multiply by 1 half these twos are going to cancel out and on the left hand side I'm going to have e squared minus 1 over 2e and on the right hand side we're going to have our expression with an additional 1 so what are we going to do with that and of course we're going to subtract right we don't want this we don't need it what we're looking for is this part so let's go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides e squared minus 1 divided by 2e or not 2e minus 1, I guess that didn't work, 1 over 3 factorial plus 1 over 5 factorial plus 1 over 7 factorial dot 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 so on and so forth and that's our expression on the right hand side. That's what we're looking for so the answer is on the left hand side so you can switch sides if you want but I would recommend that you get used to working on either side of the equation because it doesn't matter, right? Great, so the answer is on the left hand side but Let's go ahead and simplify it a little bit, shall we? Let's make a common denominator. And so now I'm going to switch sides still because I know a lot of times, unless you're writing right to left, of course, that's a different story. But uh, if you are, have, if you have your expression on the left hand side most of the time, then you would want to put it this way. And uh, I'm going to make a common denominator, e squared minus 1 minus 2e all over 2e. And let's go ahead and do one more step to simplify this and put it in the most standard acceptable form so that we can get our expression in the simplest form hopefully so our sum is actually convergent and this is going to be the value of that sum of course the difference between this problem and the other problem that I already told you about is that there is an extra one which we need to clear okay and this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.